all of this has happened to me before. I learned all this the hard way. For the first 35 years of my life, I was not paying enough attention to the right measurements in the genes, so I ended up making costly mistakes. For example, this pair from Seven, it's eight inch wide. On me, this is like two inches under my belly button. It's just not that comfortable. So I'm gonna have to donate them even though I spent a lot of money on it. Your rise and your height goes hand in hand together. So if you are petite, if you're under 5'4", it's very likely that your rise is shorter. But that's not always the case. For example, I am 5'2", but my rise is longer than a lot of petite women of my height. But it could also be the other way around. You could be over 5'4", you could be 5'6", but your rise might be shorter than women of your height. If you're familiar with the five common body shapes, there seem to be some correlation there. For example, women with the hourglass body shape or the pear body shape both have very clear waist definition. They tend to have longer rise. But on the other hand, women with not so obvious waist definition, such as the rectangle body shape, they tend to have shorter rise. It may be because if your rise is naturally shorter, then your pelvis might be starting right under your rib cage, so therefore there's just not enough space to have a waist definition. But of course, this is not absolute. Some of you left comments below that you have a pear-shaped body, but you do have a shorter rise and longer legs. That is so totally normal, because our human body can have so many different variations. In fact, I think it's really hard for any of us to find one category, one body shape that we can check all the boxes that can describe all of our body features. I do have another video on this topic. What are the most common mixed body shapes? Make sure you watch this video as well. Ochi, rice is so important. How do I know what my rice measurement is? Well, to be quite honest, it's not that easy for us to measure our own rice. A lot of us know how to measure our chest, our waist, and our hips. But when it comes to the rise, instead, it's much easier for you to measure the jeans that you already own. So find your favorite pair of jeans, the pair that you feel most comfortable in, and lay it flat on the floor or in your bed and measure the distance between the crotch and the waistband. And then going forward, you can use this number as your benchmark. For me, this pair is from Gap. I have worn this pair a lot, so I know this is the pair my body finds very comfortable in. When I'm standing, it's reaching right at my belly button. The rise is 10 and a half inches. So I know going forward, if I'm getting a pair that's under 10 and a half inches in rise, then it's gonna be below my belly button. For me, that is a no-go. But for you, it could be a different number. You should know the best rise for you this way. You also want to know the rise measurements that don't work for you. For instance, this pair, paperback jeans. These are very much on trend, even though I love high-rise jeans, but paperback jeans, they add one to two inches to the traditional high-rise jeans. This one has 12 and a half inch in the rise. So when I'm wearing this, I feel like it's reaching right under my ribcage. Even though I have a longer torso and longer rise, still, this doesn't look very flattering because it looks out of proportion for my body. I have my sweet spot between 10 and a half inches and possibly 12 inches, and that is the best rise range for me. And for you, that number is gonna be different, and it's very important for you to know that number. If you happen to have a shorter torso, it's possible your ideal range may be between eight and a half and 10 inches. Knowing your best rise range is really important. It can help you avoid the expensive mistakes I made when I didn't know how the rise works. If you're petite, generally speaking, high-rise jeans is more flattering because whatever the jeans covers, the eye is gonna assume that's part of your legs. So if your jeans is going above your natural waist, that's gonna make the eye believe your legs are longer. So that's why for those of us who want to make our legs look elongated, high-rise typically works better. 
However, it's hard to make a blanket statement because every petite woman can also have different body shape. A lot of you have mentioned in the comments below that you do have shorter rise and longer legs body type. If that is you, it's really important for you to strike a balance for your body shape. You don't want the jeans to be so high rise that it looks like you have no torso at all. That I like the balance things. You also don't want your jeans to be so low rise then you ended up making your legs look much shorter. So mid-rise is probably a sweet spot for you. When you're shopping for jeans, you probably have noticed a lot of retailers would put the high-rise versus low-rise versus mid-rise in different categories. You can use that as a reference, but it's important for you to know that definition is different across all retailers, so I wouldn't 100% depend on their category. For instance, 10 inch rise may be considered high rise by Madewell, but with Express, they consider that just mid rise because they make 12 inch rise jeans. So it's really important for you to look at the actual rise measurements for that jeans. The trend. I've done several videos recently about what is the current trend going on this fall and winter, and some of you have left comments below that, why do I have to care about the trend? Well, you really don't. But for me, it's just fun to know the trend that is going on, and also it's interesting to observe how the fashion trends can go in circles. But that doesn't mean that you have to follow the trends. For instance, in the past decade or so, if not longer, that we have had the trend of all things high rise. I know a lot of you have mentioned to me that you just can't wait for it to go away because especially if you have shorter rise, you probably notice that high rise doesn't look quite right on your body shape. So if that is the case, you may be happier with what is going on right now. I'm not saying high rise is out of style, but we are starting to see more and more lower rise jeans and more and more people wearing it. So that means if you do have a shorter rise, shorter torso, then now all of a sudden you have much more options for you to choose from. And you can totally go with those lower rise jeans, but on you that might just look like mid rise jeans and that might be your sweet spot. And for those of us, if you happen to have a longer rise, a longer torso like me, I know I will continue to wear high rise. It's not really because of the trend. The trend is always gonna change. But what suits you, what fits your body shape, what makes your body feel comfortable, that really only you would know. And that's really the only thing that matters, no matter how the trends go. I am an all things high rise kind of girl. Not only with jeans, but any bottom. High rise pants, high rise skirts. I found high rise Everything just works the best for my body shape because I have a longer rise. No matter how trendy the low rise jeans become, I know I will be wearing high rise jeans. If you happen to have a summer body shape like me, then no matter how the trend is gonna change, you probably will still find high rise jeans more flattering and more comfortable for you. Speaking of the trend, there are five denim trends that's going very strong, but if you have short legs like me, they just don't work. Watch this video. What are the five denim trends that's so popular? But if you happen to have short legs like me, you should really avoid them.